And there you have it, November 13th, 2012, the day that a large portion of the EGL community is going to be waiting for. It is the launch of Black Ops 2 from Treyarch. We're seeing a return for, uh, by Activision, obviously. With Call of Duty, they, they flip back and forth between uh, the two different developers, or at least they used to flip back and forth between the two different developers. And then a uh, big legal battle happened between Affinity Ward and Activision. But um, yes, we're on to Black Ops 2 now. That trailer... Um, does it scare you at all, Mello, for, from an esports perspective, or do you think that there's um, some good light there? Um, I, 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 do, I intentionally don't watch videos like this, um, and I haven't done for years, because I think it has a tendency to, you know, build hype and stuff, and the next thing, you know, the game comes out and it's, it's poor, but, um, but, you know, uh, they've always kind of tried to move in the right direction, try out, but they've always ended up having some fatal flaw in the game. I mean, Black Ops, the maps were good. You know, a lot of the systems in the game were good, but then the bullet registration was pretty dire. Um, but I, I think they could they could really get it right this time. And there is a good, you know, there is the option there for them to really, like, you know, take hold of the franchise now and um, really, you know, be the, the developer that, like, everyone looks to as the, as the big, big title for Call of Duty rather than, you know, people looking at IW for, to release the big games on the Call of Duty thing. I think that one of the, um, I mean, Treyarch as a developer, you look at the um, early Call of Duty they did, um, terrible comes to mind, and then all of a sudden Black Ops came out, and it was, um, you know, arguably, I mean, since Call of Duty 4, um, a game that was at least somewhat, you know, playable for esports, um, and then obviously now we're on to Modern Warfare 3, we're always going to have this swap, and, and especially in the console side of things, we, we do tend to move between games whenever a new one comes out. I think Gears of War is possibly the last game I can think of that we didn't really see. You know, Gears of War 2 came out, the communities tried to switch to it, and it didn't really work out. And then at EGL events, until this past event we were playing, um, or the past two events we were playing, Gears of War 1. So, yeah. possibly, it's you know pretty much obvious that we're going to see a move to Black Ops 2 when the game comes out in November. Um, that's going to be pa past kind of the EGL season for 2012, so we don't have to worry about it. But you look at it, there's um, kind of the things that I've taken from it. Um, it kind of reminded me a lot of Ghost Recon and the fact that there's obviously drones and a lot of technology that's going to be playable. Um, it's very urban. Um, they've kind of thrown in a bunch of stuff, which... Um, it just all kind of seems ridiculous, and I know it won't be part of the multiplayer, like riding horses and stuff, but I'm guaranteeing that being able to control some of the stuff that we saw from a kind of technology standpoint, because the game is set uh, you know, quite far in the future, um, will be a part of the multiplayer. And will that be incorporated? Because you look at the way the rule sets are for Deserto, and um, here in Europe, and, and kind of the Americans are moving to it, is that we try to keep the game uh, very clean and simple, and make sure that anything that kind of um, doesn't involve kind of the highest skill set gets removed from the game. Yeah. I, I mean, firstly, I wonder how much a horse is going to be used in combat in the future. Well, I think they were just kind of sat down in a production meeting and someone was like, you know what? We've got drones, we've got robots, we've got these, um, you know, mechs, battle mechs, and these crazy aircraft that um, looks like you're going to be able to fly in the game. Um, and someone was like, well, what about horses, man? I, I think that what happened was they all had to go away with, and come back with an idea as to what they could put into the game. And one of them hadn't done any work at all. And he just came in and he said, horses. horses. And then that was how it ended. It's exactly. a, guy, a guy who worked on Red Dead, Red Dead Redemption. And he's like, oh, listen, who, man, pony. I've, got the, uh, I've got some of the horse drawings and stuff we can reuse. But yeah, it's kind of... I'm you Obviously, you said you don't really pay attention to this kind of stuff. But I've watched it. I've kind of read quite a bit about it. And... I, I'm really, really concerned for the community from the, from an actual competitive standpoint. The one thing that doesn't concern me is the fact that Treyarch has have made it very, very clear over the last few months that the land capabilities um, and the rumors surrounding the game is that from the PC side of things that there's going to be most likely dedicated servers, which makes me believe that there's going to be proper land support for consoles. Uh, yeah, um, proper land support, yes, but 
let's hope that the game's worth supporting online, if you know what I mean, because there's no of point course. in being able to link up to you and then just do jewels like we're in the Middle Ages. You know what I mean, you on a horse, me on a horse, loser, you know, whoever taps A the fastest loses. That's not what it needs to be about when it comes down to it. And hopefully, that I, I just hope that developers like this, you know, they, I don't know if they always know what people from the gaming scene want. So, like... All, yeah, this so when it, all this coming from uh, the Europe or UK champion for um, what's the mobile game you're playing? Asphalt was a very, very, Asphalt. very incredible title. I'll have you know. So I'd rather that we we don't criticize that right now. Right. At the end of the day, I, fingers of fury. Um, I mean, yeah. If there's horses and and all that kind of nonsense involved, then the chances of us playing that competitively are very slim. But as I just mentioned, Treyarch do seem to be uh, very open to esports. Obviously, they saw how Black Ops was played at MLG over the last uh, couple of years on the PS3. Hopefully, they've taken notice of um, what EGL and Reflex um, and some of the other events around the world have done with the game, and can see that you know this is it might be a very small and niche side of um, the whole games market, considering we're talking about a game which will quite possibly be the biggest selling piece of entertainment of all time, but it's a, a worthwhile investment because as long as those games remain competitive, the chances are that it will have an influence on the, the, the future titles of the game. So hopefully we're going to see a step away from kind of what happened with Modern Warfare 3 to something that is a lot more competitive. And um, I, I, don't, I don't know like what you know about kind of, I know I've heard rumors like Fwiz might be involved a bit and has talked to Treyarch. Is that, is that true? I don't know because a lot of game, a lot of um, game developers, you know, claim to pay lip service to these kind of things, but then the game comes out and you just think, I don't really know what they're doing. There's only really, traditionally, StarCraft that's truly gone as far as listening to the community, and making sure that the balance was perfect when the game is released. And even then, you know, I don't know how how close they got it on SC2, but you know, obviously the game's taken off big time, so it must have been fairly accurate. Right, so I mean, it's a, the big advantage for PC titles is the fact that they can mod the game. So you get mods, which um, you look at uh, Counter Strike Source and the mods Call that Call of Duty Four, of course, like the yeah. kind of being able to have the players on screen and the graphics are integrated into kind of the spectator mode and stuff is unbelievable. There's only two titles which I've kind of um, seen um, from a, a console perspective that have really embraced esports, and of course that's Halo with. Um, um, MLG having the MLG football. playlist and having well, the there, MLG playlist and there, so there is a competitive playlist on um, Call of Duty I don't know if there is on uh, Modern Warfare 3 but there was on Black Ops there was a, a like you could go into one of the settings and it was just called competitive and it was more or less the MLG settings which was more which then again was almost nothing stripped out so it was the same old same old really just yeah. four and four that was the only thing it really did and then um, of course another title is uh, World in Conflict which um like I got to speak with the developers and stuff when that was coming out and how they could incorporate kind of the spectator mode settings and so on. And, and that was a, one of my favorite games over the last kind of maybe six years. And, um, you know, it was terrible on the console, but on the PC it was pretty awesome. And it was, it was kind of fun to cast because of the control you had. So hopefully we're going to see a lot kind of more of the, the PC um, influence on how the spec modes work in these games in, you know, I guess kind of at least Modern Warfare has a spectator mode. It might not have land support, but at least it's got the capabilities for us to be able to cast it with ease because we only have to hook it up to, you know, hook up one Xbox and it's just the caster's Xbox. Where with Halo, um, hopefully with Halo 4, they'll have some sort of spec mode. But, you know, in Reach, we're still hooking up four Xboxes in order to get all four player views. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, I mean this. There's different things from the different games that, like, you wonder why theater mode's been in Halo for ages, but they don't have the spectator mode. And then there's games that have the spectator mode that don't have the theater mode, and you just think, how hard can it be to bring it all together? Yeah, it's kind of... But, again, it, it comes into, perhaps, um, it, trademarks and, and patents and so on. We don't know exactly what kind of... Um, yeah, that's true. ...controls the, you know, the copyrights on any of these technologies. So, for all we know, kind of Microsoft have dibs on, you know, being able to create and record gameplay and that whole system that's in halo where spectator mode's been around and, and in, you know with pc games it's so hard to control that because of uh the mod community that developers just it's kind of an open open thing that everyone can kind of borrow and take from yeah um yes yeah, i guess we'll see soon but of course 
hopefully there'll be land support and a kind of a, a great spectator mode involved in Black Ops 2. Um, Treyarch, get in contact with us. We've been trying to get in contact with you, but um, to no avail. We're going to take another break, but when we return, we promise we will be delivering you the news that you've been waiting for. The anticipation will finally come to a head here on EGL Live. We'll be making the announcement for EGL 6 and where, what, and when it's going to be. And we'll also be talking a little bit about EGL 7. So stick around. We're going into the final segment after this break. And then you will know exactly what you want to know. <laughs> 